So I would like to explain and demo and show you how you can use recursion in GraphQL. And if you do use recursion, how you can do so responsibly and not introduce any vulnerabilities into your application. As when you introduce recursion, that can potentially allow attackers to use a denial of service to actually bring down your application. And I'm gonna show you guys how. So in GraphQL, yes, it supports recursion. So a client can in fact refer to itself. So an object can refer to itself. That's fine. So if I go in here and I set the client to have a client reference, and I've changed it to be a, a setter and a builder for this, for this demo. And if I come in here and I have client A, and I have client B, and client A refers to client B, and client B refers to client A. So you can imagine this is gonna go for infinite in a circle. A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B. And this can go on and on and on forever. Now, if you do this, you can run your application. And if we go back to the playground, if we say client first itself, client's client, client, if you see that, it'll be start one, start two, and then say we go ID, and then we say client again, and we just copy this. So client here and send that. Philip, first of all, start one, start two, start one, start two, and again, start one, start two, and again, and again, and again. This will go on and on and on and on and on. Now you can imagine how dangerous this is. If somebody managed to figure this out and you don't have, you just have recursion and you don't have what I'm going to explain is the max depth uh, parameter set on the GraphQL server, then yes, this causes out of memory. This will crash the app, especially if they submit a massive one in and it's huge amounts of resources and the serialization just goes in an infinite loop. You could have big problems. You could be waking up at 2, 3 a.m. with all your servers dead and having to debug this issue. Not good, not good, not good. So how do we avoid this? So let's, let me revert the schema back. And if we come in here and go to the properties file, there's a property called max depth. So GraphQL server max query depth, and let's set that to five. Now that's, as it, I guess it's self-explanatory. This is the maximum depth you can have when you're making a query. And the depth is specified and created by each level in your, your query. So it starts from the very top. So, so we make sure I count this right. So it's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six on this request. So as you see, if I submit the request, Depth was exceeded. I asked for six when the maximum on the server is five. So I can go ahead and delete the last one and I'll get the, the five. I'll get my request back because it is depth of five. Now I advise, even if you don't have recursion, to set this property to some kind of reasonable default, maybe quite large, just in case somebody in the future comes along doesn't really know GraphQL, doesn't really, doesn't watch this video, and just decides to, to add in recursion, well, there's gonna be big problems and big issues that are gonna go on. So don't let that sneak into your application. It's better having a limit set and having integration tests, which cover the depth in there. So that's my one tip. Always make sure you have max query depth set, and that will avoid um, out of memory errors in your application. Now, since GraphQL runs actually the, the recursion forever and you can specify forever, there's different ways of avoiding this. And I will cover these in a more advanced video towards the end as they're more complicated. And I will see you guys in the next episode.